Okay, guys, so this is our day one of reviewing some of the tricky stuff that you should have done in second year two. By the way, for us, this is going to be chapter eight. So again, this is day one. So we're going to start with our Pythagorean theorem and also setting up our ratios for our three trig functions that we know, sine, cosine, and tangent. So let's talk about the Pythagorean theorem. What is the Pythagorean theorem? It is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, which of these, a, b, or c, is the most important to identify? c. Why? Because c is by itself. These two can interchange. Now, what is c? c is the longest side. It is the side across from the right angle. Okay, so this is c. And the other two, it doesn't matter whether you say this one's a or this one's b. Or this one's B and that one's A. For the Pythagorean theorem, the A and B are what we call the legs of our right triangle. And the longest side, C, is called the hypotenuse. Now we're going to do some examples here on how to solve for a missing side, which we would use the Pythagorean theorem. So example one. What if I said to you that A is 6, B is 8, and we're solving for C? Now, of course, if you have a triangle drawn out, you're going to label, hey, what's the hypotenuse? That's my C, and what are the other two sides? That's my A and B, okay? So right now, all I have to do is plug in. So I have 6 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared. 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. c squared. So I'm going to add those two together. We get 100 equals c squared. How do you get rid of a square? You square root both sides, right? Well, when we take the square root of both sides, what happens? The square root of 100 is 10. Now, I want to have this discussion really quick, because when we take the square root, how many answers are you actually supposed to get? You're supposed to get two, right? Because 10 times 10 is 100, but there's another one. Negative 10 times negative 10 is 100. So technically, there's two answers. When it comes to geometry and the Pythagorean theorem, because we're talking about a shape and a distance, we actually don't have to include that negative number because you can never say, hey, I have a negative 10 inches, right? Or I never go a negative 10 miles. No, I went 10 miles in a different direction. So when it comes to the Pythagorean theorem and taking that square root, it's always going to be positive, okay? Now, example two. And I'm going to do two things with this example. And I want you to pay attention. First of all, in this case, I'm going to say A is seven. We're going to find B and C equals 15. So make sure you set this up correctly. We have seven squared plus B squared equals 15 squared. All right, so we get 49 plus b squared equals 15 squared. Do it on your calculator if you have to. It's 225. Now we have to subtract 49 from both sides. So we get b squared equals 176. Take the square root, right? So if we take the square root, we get b equals the square root of 176. So that was my first thing in this example that I wanted you to see is that it's a little bit different. We have to do one more step because we're solving for a leg and not the hypotenuse. But there's one other thing that you need to do here. We need to simplify this. That's another step. Okay. So on your side, 176, and we're going to do our tree. Sorry for the bell. Um, right off the bat, if you don't know something that goes in it, Hey, it's even, let's try two. So this is two times 80, 88, yep. 88 breaks up into, let's go, uh, 
Let's go 4 and 22. And then 22 is 2 and 11. I know I did this kind of awkward, didn't I? And 4 is 2 and 2. All right, remember we're making pairs. So here's a pair. Here's a pair. Remember we take one of those pairs each and stick them on the outside. So two times two is four. And whatever is left over is in that square root, which is 11. So our side B or leg B is four square root 11. Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna remember some trig here. When we talk about our trig ratios and stuff, you need to make sure that you're paying attention to what angle you're using because your angle determines what side is which. So usually in, in trigonometry, they use this symbol, which is theta, okay? Theta shows what angle we're looking at. What I mean by watching what angle we use is because if I draw the same triangle, but put my theta up here, my sides change a little bit. What's great about connecting it with the Pythagorean theorem is the hypotenuse is always a hypotenuse. It's always across from the right angle. So here's our hypotenuse. Now, there are two other sides that we need to think of, and we call them opposite and adjacent. Opposite means across, and adjacent means right next to. So according to this theta right here, my opposite side is right over here, because it's opposite the angle. And this side right here is our adjacent, because it's right next to our angle. Now I want to show you why theta is so important, because remember this vertical line here was our opposite before. But if you look now, and theta is up here, that vertical is not opposite anymore. It's right next to it, which is adjacent. Our opposite is right down here. So what I want you to do is when you are doing your trig functions, make sure you label your adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse first. Okay, let's see how much we remember. This is a word that allows us to remember our sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? Soka toa. The reason why is because now we can, we can set up a ratio of sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. This is the side ratios with our trig function. Look at sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that allows us to do our ratios correctly. Let's do one problem together and then you can do some practice on your Pythagorean theorem and practicing those ratios, okay? All right, so this is theta. Remember, I said the first thing to do is label your sides. So across from the right angle is our hypotenuse. Across from our theta is called opposite. And right next to it is adjacent. All right, sine opposite, which ones are opposite? Eight over hypotenuse, right, is 17 in this case. And we're done for now. <laughs> Cosine is adjacent, adjacent is 15 over hypotenuse, which is 17. And tangent, so I'm gonna, so I don't, get into other problems. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Opposite in this case is eight. Adjacent is 15. Now on your practice work, remember the, to reduce your ratios as you go through them. Don't forget to label them either. 